there's a lot of good uh, good physical quality in the songs we made. More so than they, they ever were, there ever was on record. I mean, so the, the songs on record were okay. On stage, they were brilliant, and it's still that way. Mm. They're, they're much better to play live, and, even to ourselves, than they ever were on record. And when you put them in front of an audience, especially a big audience, they're that much better again. In 1984, legendary hard rock band Deep Purple finally reunited, bringing back the iconic Mark II lineup of Ian Gillan, Richie Blackmore, Roger Glover, John Lord, and Ian Pace. Their comeback album, Perfect Strangers, showcased their renewed energy and musical prowess, delighting fans with powerful new tracks and a triumphant world tour. This reunion reignited Deep Purple's flame, celebrating their storied past while propelling them into an exciting new chapter of rock and roll history. Here follows a candid interview with drummer Ian Pace. So the whole thing effectively turns full circle. Correct. But then it normally does. Given enough time, yeah. But it, uh, th that's really what I meant, because it seems that we're at a, a, a period in rock music when things are going back to where they were, when they were, when they were new and when they were fresh, but with a, a lot more power. I think what we have is a situation, uh, especially in the last two years, where there's, excitement-wise, there's not a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of bands coming up trying to to create what, what was created a decade ago and not quite making it on the rock and roll level. And we have, on the pop scene, we have nothing going on at all. I mean, we have a, um, a fashion show going on, which has nothing to do with music, whatever. Um, what I hope we can re-inject is a little bit of thought, a little bit of class into, into heavy rock and roll. Um, because I think it's time that somebody actually said, come on, there's more to it than just making a loud noise and playing at 300 miles an hour for two hours. There's more to it than that. That's a very important part of it, but the, that's only one part of it. Um, and the thing of Full Circle is correct. Things go through a, a, a series like a doldrum period, and they go through high points. Uh, like the late 60s going to the 70s was a high point. The mid-70s was a low point. We seem to be coming to a high point again where... Uh, rock and roll music can be exciting again. We've got some exciting bands, but speaking as a, as a Britisher and a European, it's a bit annoying because all the exciting bands seem to be coming from America at the moment. And that's not the way God intended it. You know? Get ready to dance, everybody. Yeah. Rock Commander is a celebration of rock and metal culture. Manage your own rock bands connect with a passionate community and experience exclusive collaborations with real bands like American Chaos and Adam and the Metal Hawks. But to, to continue any excitement, you need the con continued excitement of an audience. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Right. If there is a gamble, that's it. Um, I believe it will work because all we ever gave in the old days was excitement, quality. And that's all we can ever give now. Um, I believe that the things that were important then are still important now. But you can probably give it to a much greater extent now based on the experience that you've had you know, since the time Purple broke up. Because the experience that every member of the band has had has been phenomenal. Yes, but none of the experience that's happened since has been on the same level as Purple was. All we can do is what we did then and, and realize that we have to be in, in the 80s now, not the 70s. Mm -hmm. Let me say we actually play any differently. We have to realize that the needs are different now. We say, I don't believe you can do 15 and 20 minute drum solos. I don't believe you can, you can leave a guitarist on his own for half an hour on stage. You can't do that. Then you could, because then you were breaking down all the boundaries and all the things that people said you couldn't do. You said, yes, we can. We can do what the hell we want. You know, it's up to you whether you like it or not, but we'll do what we want. Yeah. That's been done. The boundaries have now been broken down. Uh, I think we all realize that, and that's why I think it'll work. I don't think we're trying to sell them 1972 and 1973 again. 
uh, that that would be wrong. It would be criminal. But they are going to call for the 1972 and they're going to get a lot of them. Tunes. They're going to get a lot of them too because uh, just in the week's rehearsal we've had, they're a lot of fun to play again. There's a lot of good uh, good physical quality in the songs we made. More so than they, they ever were, there ever was on record. I mean, so the songs on record were okay. On stage, they were brilliant, and it's still that way. Mm. They're, they're much better to play live, and, even to ourselves, than they ever were on record. And when you put them in front of an audience, especially a big audience, they're that much better again. Can I ask you, of all the tracks that you recorded with the bands that you worked with mm -hmm. since Purple Split, yeah. which track do you think is best representative of you? I'd have to name two, probably. Uh, probably on the last Gary Moore album, probably Victims of the Future, the actual track itself. And the second one was a White Snake track called uh, Crying in the Rain. A lovely, heavy, slow shuffle. Yeah. Which is a, a feel I've always liked. So those two tracks were the ones that if I have to play something to a friend or somebody who doesn't know anything I, that I do, one of those tracks would be what I would play. was very blues orientated and probably still is. In a very sort of British way, yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was a nice change. Um, initially I found the, the restriction as a drummer refreshing uh, because I had to control uh, certain natural emotions I would have for filling all the holes in and having a wonderful time. Towards the end that became uh, tiresome because it was an unnatural thing for me to do. Yeah. Uh, I actually play naturally the way I play with, with the purple setup, where it's, you know, it's head forward, trust in the Lord. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong, but you're always going for it. You're always trying for that little bit more. Yeah. Which is where excitement develops. Which is how the books have it. You got the gig in the first place. With purple, you you uh, you were well, it's like in and you just blinded them all with science. It's like anything, any job you get, no matter if you're a drummer or a trainee or accountant or a train driver, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it as good as you can to get the gig. Yeah. Um, and I did slightly go over the top, uh, which uh, for me was the right ploy at the time, although I didn't know it because the guy who already had the gig initially was um, into the uh, aromatic weed. And uh, his his sort of love was lying completely the other way, you know. So let's lay back and enjoy it, man. You know? <laughs> um, so I was lucky; I played it the right way. In hearing the the new Purple album, the, to my ear anyway, and to the ears of other people that I've spoken to who've heard it, it, it's no compromise at all, and it is not made for America. It is no. Uh, it is straight ahead. Purple with all the influences individually that you've collected along the way. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty honest appraisal of what we think we've done. Uh, we never made a record for any one particular market. We never actually compromised on the the way we thought of songs. Uh, and we never tried to make a single in the old days other than, say, Black Knight. Yeah. Which was... Um, the end of a, a two-hour drunken session in the pub where we tried to make a single we couldn't we got drunk and we found we had an idea and we, we did it in an hour basically we never tried really to make singles and we haven't tried to get a single off this record and if there isn't a single off this record i'll be very very happy um that's not what it's about uh, we're not trying to compete with your culture clubs and whams and these people they have their own gig and good luck to them that's not what we're about we're about presenting 35, 40 minutes of music as an entity. Um, and you can't just take a bit of it out of context and, and get the full benefit. You've got to take the whole lot and say, yes, I see what it's about. You know, that's, you've, got to, you've got to appreciate the whole thing. You can hate it or you can love it. It's up to you. All we can do is say, that's what, that's what we think music, rock and roll music is about. We played it as honestly as we can. We played it as hard as we can. We tried to give the best songs, the best performances. And what we think is an honest purple um, rendition of everything we've, we've created in the last six months. And the album Perfect Strangers by Deep Purple is now available. That was called Wasted Sunsets. 
Many thanks to Richie Blackmore, Ian Gillen, Roger Glover, John Lord and Ian Pace for their time. Thanks to the landlord of the ship in Bedford and also the bar staff at the Moat Hotel for their hospitality. And as somebody said when they first heard the album, oh well, I think all the other bands better go back to school. On behalf of all the people on the music side of Radio 1, this is Tommy Vance. I wish you well. Have yourself a very, very good weekend and a safe weekend as well. God bless. Good night.